Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we will be discussing a very interesting topic in electronics called Schmidt trigger. It is a very useful circuit that has many applications from noise filtering to digital signal processing. So let's dive right in and understand the working of a Schmidt trigger. A Schmidt trigger is a type of a comparator circuit that converts a non-linear input signal into a square wave output signal. It is a bistable circuit that has two states, namely high and low. The output of the Schmidt trigger switches between these two states based on the input signal. A Schmidt trigger consists of two resistors and one operational amplifier. The two resistors form a voltage divider and the output of the op-amp is connected back to its non-inverting input through a feedback resistor. To understand the working of a Schmidt trigger, let's first start from the basic building block, which is the operational amplifier, and forget about the feedback and the input resistor. So let's take the resistors out of the circuit and simply connect the input to its non-inverting terminal and the reference to the inverting input like this. Now some of you might recognize this circuit because this is now a simple comparator. So if the input goes higher than the reference voltage, the output of the comparator turns high. And if the input goes lower than the reference, the output of the comparator stays low. To test this practically, let's build a circuit on a breadboard and see it in action. For creating the reference, I'm just using a potentiometer as a potential divider to get around 5 volts. This 5 volt is now our reference voltage which will directly go to the inverting input of the op amp. For the input signal, I'm using the same approach of using the potentiometer as a potential divider, whose voltage I could vary by turning the screw on the potentiometer. In real world, this input could be anything, like a sensor having a variable output voltage. The output of this goes to the non-inverting input of the op-amp. To have a bit of visual representation of what's going on, I connected a small LED at the output of the op-amp. If the voltage goes above a certain limit, which is in our case a reference of 5 volts, the output turns on. So as you can see, when the input voltage goes above 5 volts, the LED turns on, and when the input voltage goes below 5 volts, the LED turns off. This circuit acts just like a simple if statement, like if the input is greater than 5 volts, the answer is yes, indicated by the LED turning on, and if the answer is no, the LED turns off. As I said, this reference could be anything. It could be any voltage level, but obviously not higher than the maximum input of the op-amp, or input from any analog sensor. As an example, let's take this LDR, which is a light-dependent resistor, and try to make a night switch with it. A night switch is basically a fancy name of a circuit, which will automatically turn on or off a light bulb by detecting the ambient light. For example, if it gets darker in a room, it will automatically turn on the lights. By building the circuit on the breadboard, as you can see, if I block the light going to the sensor, it turns on the light, and when I unblock it, the light turns off. Sweet! The sensor is basically varying its resistance based on the intensity of light. So by creating a resistor divider circuit, we can convert the change of resistance in varying voltage. This voltage now acts as an input for the comparator and I can change the reference by that potentiometer. The reference now decides the intensity at which the LED turns on and off, 
you will get lots of images of the circuit on Google if you search night switch circuit with op-amp. But hold on, there is a massive problem with all these circuits. You see the reference I set is around 5.4 volts and when I cover the sensor, it turns on the LED and when I move slightly back, it turns off the LED. This is because of the fixed reference. When there is a change really close to the reference voltage, the output goes off and on again and again. This happens due to the small variation in the intensity and the noise in the signal. So if you were to build this circuit and install it with a light bulb, when the sun goes out and it gets darker slowly, there will be a time when the voltage from the LDR is really close to the reference and due to the noise, it recursively turns on and turns off the output until the sensor voltage goes higher than the reference voltage, in which case the output stays on continuously. The example I showed you is called level detection, but you can observe this same problem in many different circuits like oscillators, debouncing, signal conditioning, and many more. Luckily for us, somebody invented the solution already, so we won't be scratching our heads. The solution to all these problems is if we have a circuit which could increase the noise immunity, and that circuit is known as a Schmidt trigger which is basically the topic of this video. Adding just two more resistors in this existing comparator circuit, we can fix all these problems. By using these two resistors, we can create an upper threshold and a lower threshold. So rather than switching the output on a fixed reference point, we now have two thresholds. This happens because the feedback resistor and the input resistor makes a voltage divider which influences the non-inversing input voltage based on the output of the op-amp, thus creating an upper and a lower threshold. So when the input voltage is higher than the upper threshold voltage, the output of the op-amp saturates to a high voltage level. The high voltage level is maintained until the input voltage drops below the lower threshold voltage. At this point, the output of the op-amp switches to a low voltage level, which is maintained until the input voltage rises above the upper threshold voltage. Now the theory of having an upper threshold and a lower threshold sounds promising, but the question is how to determine these threshold levels. These threshold levels can be determined by the ratio of the two resistors in the circuit. The difference between the upper and the lower threshold is called the hysteresis, which helps to filter out noise and other unwanted signal. In this region, the output doesn't respond to any changes in the input signal. The formula to calculate the upper and the lower threshold is pretty simple. The lower threshold can be determined by using this formula and the upper threshold can be determined by using this formula. Here, we said is the confusing bit. Basically, it's a maximum output voltage of an op-amp. In my case, I'm using a LM358 op-amp. So if we look in the datasheet of this op-amp, as you can see, it's the input voltage minus 1.5 volts. So if you, for example, use a rail-to-rail op-amp, this difference would be in millivolts. I am powering the op-amp with 12 volts. So I'll be getting around 10.5 volts output from the op-amp. This is known as the saturation voltage of an op-amp. The goal here is to set the hysteresis to around 0.5 volts. So I chose a value for RF as 100K and RN as 4.7K. Make sure to choose very high value of resistors at least in kilo ohms to minimize the loading effect. The answer I got by solving these two equations and subtracting the upper threshold and the lower threshold is around 0.4935 volts, which is really close to our target hysteresis of 0.5 volts. By adding these two resistors in the circuit, we now have an upper threshold and a lower threshold. 
Now for the LED to turn on, I have to go above the upper threshold which is now around 5.2 volts. And to turn it off, I have to go below the lower threshold which is around 4.7 volts. This solves the problem of any unwanted turn on or turn off. And as you can see, it's not turning on and off with any slight movement. Magic. Just to confirm that I'm not talking rubbish, let's connect the signal from the sensor and the output of the Schmidt trigger to the oscilloscope and observe the signals. So here this yellow line is actually our input signal which is coming from the sensor and blue is the output of the Schmidt trigger and if you notice the output turns on at 5.16 volts and it turns off at 4.68 volts and if you calculate the difference between the turn on and the turn off then the difference is 480 millivolts which is exactly the hysteresis we calculated. Awesome! To make the circuit a bit more robust against the noise, you could throw in a RC filter with a 10K resistor and a 10 microfarad capacitor before the signal gets into the op amp. Also, you could add in a relay at the output to control any AC appliance, which would be really cool. So, there you have it folks, a fully functional night switch circuit and detailed introduction to Schmidt Trigger and its applications. I hope this video has been informative and has helped you understand the working of the Schmidt Trigger. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. Share this video with your friends and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more interesting videos on electronics. Thanks for watching and I will see you in my next video.